What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I know I've been gone for a while, but I'm back and we're gonna pick up right where we left off on this EJ205 engine build in my 1998 RSTI two-door coupe swap. I got some really cool stuff to show you guys today. We're gonna take a deep dive into the coolant flow through Subaru heads and I'm gonna take a closer look at the reverse cooling mod kits that are currently on the market. Thanks again for checking out the video guys. My name's Luke, this is the Subaru Only Show. My little Subaru only shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles and motorsport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. So thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. Okay, so let's head into the shop and let's take a closer look at where we left off. Here's that EJ205 engine. This is an engine from a 2005 US domestic model WRX. As you can see, I've got one of the heads off on the bottom right there. And on the top half right here, this head is bolted up and you probably notice that nice polished valve cover. That's actually from an earlier video where I walk you through all the steps to do that. I polished both the valve covers for this engine and I think it's a really nice upgrade. And as you move over here to my workshop desk, you'll see I have the other head on the desk and that's that multi-layer steel head gasket. And as you'll see behind, those are the ARP head studs. I'm actually installing ARP head studs in place of the factory head bolts. And then we have the list for the EJ205 engine build that we're gonna pick up from where we left off. And I've pretty much done a video for each one of the steps on this list. I did a video for the teardown of the engine, number two, machining the heads, cleaning the short block, painting the intake manifold, and actually that was a pretty cool video because in that video, I painted the intake manifold with that factory wrinkle coat STI red color. And then number five was ceramic coating the exhaust. Number six is polishing the valve covers. And combined, all these little extra steps like cleaning the short block, painting the intake manifold, doing the exhaust, and polishing the valve covers are really gonna make this engine stand out in the engine bay at the end of this whole build. And then moving on down, I've skipped number seven, the plastic timing cover. I'm gonna save that for later or I'm gonna skip it all together and just replace it with a factory one. And then number eight, the oil pickup, that's where I installed a Killer B welded pickup, and I upgraded my oil pan to a later style oil pan that had a deeper dish and actually has better oil control. And right now I'm on step nine, which is new head gaskets. And that's what I'm doing right now. I've already installed one of the new head gaskets, but before I continued installing these head gaskets and these ARP head studs and continuing on this list, I've actually gone on a little bit of a tangent with this reverse cooling mod kit that's on the market. You see these reverse cooling mod kits that are on market, they actually alter the coolant flow through the heads of these EJ205 motors so that you can have better coolant control for cylinder number four and ultimately have more uniform temperatures for all four combustion chambers. So I went ahead and purchased two of the more commonly available reverse cooling mod kits that are on the market and I'm doing a little bit of research into how the coolant flows through these Subaru heads. And I've gathered all the parts together and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you guys through all the things that I've learned about how coolant flows through the heads of these Subaru motors and how and why you might wanna modify the way the coolant flows so you can have better heat control for that number four cylinder. Okay, what you're looking at here is actually a whiteboard image that I drew for one of my earlier videos that walks through how coolant flows through these Subaru EJ motors. And this pretty much applies to almost all flat four Subaru motors. And then what you'll see on the bottom here is actually the reverse cooling mod kits are on the market. This one on the left is the VEMS kit. This is about $90. And then one on the right here, this is from Geta Dom Tune. You can get this from a number of suppliers out there. I know IAG sells them and several other companies out there or you can get it directly from Get a Dom Tune. So these are both of the coolant mod kits that are on the market, and I'm gonna walk through and compare each of these kits in detail at a later point. Before I do that, I wanna step back and walk through how coolant flows through these Subaru engines. Because once you have a better idea of how coolant flows through these Subaru engines, and in particular, how the coolant flows through the heads of these Subaru engines, you're gonna have a much better idea of why you might wanna consider buying one of these reverse cooling mod kits. What you're looking at here on this whiteboard is a big radiator here on the front and what happens is coolant comes out of the engine and goes into the top of the radiator and then it flows through the radiator being cooled by ambient air and then comes out the bottom as cold coolant. This coolant right here at the bottom is the coldest coolant in the system. 
from that point, it gets drawn directly into the water pump. And then from the water pump, it gets pumped through the heads on both sides and then comes out of the crossover pipe. And incidentally, you also have your oil cooler. That oil cooler also gets coolant. But that coolant for the oil cooler actually comes from the right side head after it's been pre-warmed and then goes to the oil cooler and then from the oil cooler back to the water pump. Now that we have a better idea of how coolant flows through this engine, I'm gonna take the camera over to the engine and over to the heads, and we're gonna take a closer look at how coolant actually flows through all the ports and all the passages on these engines. Okay guys, we're gonna take a closer look at how the coolant flows with this EJ205 engine. Now this is an engine from a 2005 US domestic model WRX, and it's a dual overhead cam turbo motor. As you can see, I have none of the timing accessories installed. The left head is off and the right head is actually installed with that polished valve cover. Now over here on the left side of the motor, that's where the water pumps are installed on these EJ motors. And that's this right here. This is actually the pulley that turns that water pump propeller. Now with the head removed, we can actually take a closer look at where the coolant goes when this water pump turns that impeller and actually draws that coolant that came out of the bottom of that radiator up into the engine, pumps it through that engine so it can start removing all the heat that's been built up in those combustion chambers. Okay, now the first thing I'm gonna do is point out exactly where our water pump is. That way for you guys who aren't familiar with this stuff, you're gonna have a little bit better idea of what you're looking at. I'm gonna take off this blue painter's tape that I put over to protect it from getting any dirt and debris in it while I'm going through this engine build. This bottom portion right here, that's where your thermostat is installed. So you'll put a thermostat in here and that thermostat will remain closed until your engine reaches its operating temperature. But once that engine reaches its operating temperature, that thermostat will open and it'll allow that cold coolant that comes out of the bottom of your radiator. Enters right here at the bottom of this water pump and gets sucked in through the impeller and gets pumped through your engine by this impeller that turns from the belt and the pulleys that are on the front of this engine. Now these two nipples right here, these are just little plastic plugs that I have that are covering these intake ports. But what you should notice is the location of these ports. Both these ports are on the outside of this impeller. So both these ports are actually gonna have negative pressure applied to them because when this impeller turns and starts sucking coolant from this bottom portion and pumping it in through the engine, it'll also be sucking coolant through both of these ports. So anytime you need to tap into these ports, you should know that they're not gonna be having coolant pushed out of them. They're gonna have coolant sucked through them into the water pump in this direction. And that's important because that's one of the ports that the reverse cooling mods tap into. One of these ports is actually used for our coolant for our turbo to recirculate through that turbo and actually cool some of the turbo heat that's generated and the other port is actually used for the factory heater core. And those manufacturers that are selling the reverse cooling mod, those guys are tapping into the line that goes to your heater core. Okay, so I've moved the camera position over to more of the left side of the engine, and I've actually rotated this engine to more of the inverse position. And the reason I've done that is so you can see a different angle for this water pump. So here's that water pump, here's a pulley for that water pump, and this big plug right here underneath everything, this plug actually accesses the chamber that the water pump pumps directly into the engine with. So you can actually unscrew this port if you wanted to, and you can access that chamber. Now I'll rotate that engine a little more, and I'll shine a light through there. We can actually see where that coolant comes in. Okay, here's a close-up view of that port. Now we're looking at the bottom of the engine, and this is actually a passage where the water pump pumps coolant into the engine, and then down through this passage, it goes over to the right side of the engine, and up through this passage, it actually goes up into the left side of the engine. So I can actually shine a light to that port and that way it's going to shine into the block and you guys can see exactly where the coolant comes into. So here on the left side of the engine, cylinders number two and number four, that light is showing exactly where the coolant is actually getting pumped into the lower chamber of your short block. And what happens is coolant actually fills this whole chamber. And because of the angle right here, that coolant's gonna hit the cylinder wall and it's gonna deflect off that cylinder wall up in this direction. Now remember, there's actually a head gasket over this. And then on top of that head gasket is a head. That's gonna be the final configuration of your engine. I'll actually grab the head gasket and throw it down just for a second so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Just to remind you guys, right? So you're gonna have your short block, you have your head gasket, and then your cylinder head sits on top of that sucker. And as you can see, the coolant is actually gonna be going into the short block. And once it fills that whole lower chamber of your short block, it's actually gonna come through these holes of your head gasket. But let me remove that head gasket a little further so you guys can continue to see where that coolant is going in the short block. 
and we'll bring that head gasket back in a second. Okay, so let's continue that conversation about coolant entering this lower chamber of your short block. Coolant comes in through here, deflects off this cylinder wall, goes in here, and fills up this whole chamber. Fills up this whole chamber, right? All this chamber. But you'll notice the chamber right here is completely sealed off. So coolant that fills this lower chamber right here doesn't actually get over to this other chamber right here. This is a solid wedge that extends from the surface right here all the way down to the bottom. It's completely sealed off. So the coolant fills this whole chamber, but only the bottom half, right? Because the engine is actually rotated right now, 90 degrees. So if this engine was sitting in its normal orientation in the engine bay of the car, this whole portion right here would be the bottom portion of your coolant chamber of your short block. And after it fills this whole bottom chamber, the coolant has nowhere else to go but through those little kidney-shaped slits in that head gasket. So I'll bring that head gasket back so you can see again what I'm talking about. Okay, so now the head gasket is back on, and now that we've looked at the, how the coolant flows without the head gasket, you guys know that this portion right here is completely sealed off. So all the coolant in here is only coming through these ports and these little teeny ports and these ports. These actually are for the head studs or head bolts. So no coolant is actually in here. Coolant's actually only in this portion underneath this head gasket, right? Coolant can actually come to these little ports too. And as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that these ports are actually little steam ports. So any air bubbles or any air pockets that are trapped in there can actually escape and get sucked through your coolant system and eventually get purged and evacuated. That way you have a solid column of coolant in almost every port and passage of your coolant system. So this is where most of the coolant will come through, these little kidney shaped slots. And from here, the coolant will actually pass through these slots and then go into the heads. And from that point, coolant flows through the heads and then back out of these slots and it goes back into the cylinder block. So I'll take this head gasket off without bending it. Put it back over there. And just to show you what I'm talking about, about the coolant going back in through this section. So coolant actually exits the heads through those little head gasket slits, those little kidney shaped slits in those head gaskets, goes back into the short block and fills this whole passage in the back of the short block and then exits right there as I pull back. So that's where coolant exits. It exits out the top of your short block. And that port is right there. That actually goes to your crossover pipe. That crossover pipe connects to your other side, so your right side head and your left side head. Connect to this crossover pipe. That's actually also where you have your temperature sensor for your coolant system. And then that crossover pipe, like I have on this diagram over here, that crossover pipe goes back to the top of your radiator to pass through those radiator fins and to get cooled by that ambient air. Thanks again for watching this video guys, I really appreciate it. As you guys know, I'm a diehard Subaru enthusiast, and I've also had the opportunity to be involved in motorsports for over two decades now. But I'm also a professional hydrogeologist, and I've actually spent years in laboratories performing experiments where I studied the flow of fluids using the properties of physics and fluid mechanics. In these YouTube videos, I'm actually able to combine my experience from the laboratories and all the research I've done with my experience from all the motorsport series I've been involved in and my passion for Subarus. If you have any professional inquiries about Subaru related R&D or digital marketing and media, you can contact me at SubaruOnlyShop at gmail.com. Or if you work in private industry or for a public municipality and you'd like to contact me for professional environmental or engineering and design services, you can review my professional academic background, my professional research experience, and my professional consulting experience on LinkedIn. Just go ahead and sign into LinkedIn and look for Luke Shannon and then type TRC. That's the company I currently work for. And if you type Luke Shannon and TRC, I'm the only person that's gonna come up. Thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. I hope to hear from you soon.